In the movie Apollo 13, things go from bad to worse in a matter of minutes. But how long did it take the real crew of Apollo 13 to realize they wouldn't be landing on the moon? We're talking power distribution and failures today on Vintage Space. There were two power sources on board the Apollo Command service module. There were the small re-entry batteries inside the command module that had to be charged for the crew to re-enter safely. So that meant that most of the power during the mission came from the service module, specifically from three fuel cells. The fuel cells inside the Apollo service module fed off the two cryogenic oxygen tanks and the cryogenic hydrogen tank. The electrochemical reaction between oxygen and hydrogen produced electricity, heat, and water the crew could drink during the mission. The three fuel cells each contained 31 separate but connected cells, and they were also separate from one another, connected only in that they shared the same oxygen and hydrogen tanks. The fuel cells were in turn connected to buses. Fuel cell 1 was connected to main DC bus A, fuel cell 2 was connected to main DC buses A and B, and fuel cell 3 was connected to main DC bus B. This meant that under normal circumstances, both buses had power if one of the fuel cells failed. The crew was also able to reconfigure the power flow from a switch inside the command module should some malfunction mean they need to isolate one of the fuel cells or one of the buses. Solid-state inverters converted the DC power into AC power for distribution into the spacecraft's electrical systems through two main buses. One of these inverters could provide the spacecraft's complete electrical needs, while the other two served as backup, and each bus was powered by its own inverter such that one could be isolated if there was a failure. So there were redundancies built into the system such that elements could be isolated if there was a malfunction. And of course, NASA had procedures in place should one of the elements fail. According to the mission rules published before Apollo 11's flight in July of 1969, pretty much any failure of a fuel cell or bus or battery in the command module would necessitate canceling the lunar landing. Of course, there was a little bit of leeway depending on when in the mission the failure occurred. Losing all three fuel cells during launch, for example, wouldn't require an abort because the charged batteries in the command module would give the crew almost five hours of power to troubleshoot the problem in orbit before they would have to re-enter the atmosphere. Losing two or three fuel cells and any of their re-entry batteries in lunar orbit would cancel the lunar landing because the crew would need the lunar module's descent engine to potentially serve as a backup should the main service propulsion engine fail. Losing the same fuel cells and batteries during the lunar landing meant a no-go for lunar stay, with the idea being to get the crew headed home as quickly as possible. Losing two or three fuel cells and any reentry batteries at any other point in the mission meant using emergency shutdown procedures to conserve power for reentry. Losing just one fuel cell at any point in the mission was the only scenario that didn't necessarily mean a bad day. That gave NASA the chance to look at what other systems were working and look at the consumables available to the crew and then make a decision whether or not to cancel the lunar landing. In all likelihood, they would not land on the moon, but it wouldn't necessarily be a disastrous situation like confronted Apollo 13. So with all kinds of warning lights going off and alarm bells ringing in the command module on Apollo 13 just minutes after oxygen tank 2 ruptured, at what point did the crew know they were not going to be landing on the moon? That this wasn't just a simple loss of one fuel cell that wouldn't necessarily be a bad day? Well, by the time Apollo 13 flew, and perhaps because NASA already had two successful lunar landings under its belt, the mission rules had changed. The loss of one fuel cell at any point before the lunar landing meant there would be no lunar orbit insertion burn. The crew would not only not land on the moon, they wouldn't even go into lunar orbit. In the Apollo 13 post-mission debriefing, Fred Hay says that about five minutes after the oxygen tank ruptured, he was looking at fuel cells 1 and 3 and saw that fuel cell 3 was putting out absolutely no power. That, he says, was the moment he knew that Apollo 13 would not be going into lunar orbit. I asked myself this question the other day after watching Apollo 13 with a bunch of space friends for the 200th time. I wanted to know how realistic it was that the crew realized they had, to quote Tom Hanks' Jim Lovell, lost the moon within a matter of minutes. The transcript is less cut and dry than the movie, of course, because there's no explanatory dialogue needed when you are in a mission. But it's true, things did really go bad in a matter of minutes on Apollo 13, and the crew knew it. So does that clarify a little bit how the power distribution was done on Apollo? I've got a bit of a more detailed explanation over on my blog, Vintage Space at Popular Science, so check that out if you still have questions. And does this also answer questions a lot of you guys have been asking me about failure moments and abort modes for Apollo? There's of course a lot more to say about this, but hopefully this is at least a starting point for those of you who have been interested. Do you guys have more questions about failure points, abort modes, power distribution, and anything else relating to Apollo 13? Let me know in the comments below, and of course questions you might have and ideas 
you would like to see covered in future episodes. Be sure to follow me on Twitter for daily vintage space content, and with new episodes going up every Friday, subscribe right here so you never miss an episode.